The North American X-15 rocket-powered aircraft project is known for bridging the gap between human crewed flight within and beyond the bounds of Earth. After successfully completing its initial test flights in the late 1950s, the X-15 became the first winged aircraft to reach the velocities of Mach 4, 5, and 6. The X-15 was also the aircraft used for the first official NASA mission after it absorbed NACA in 1958. But its most recognized mission was flight number 90. A test flight conducted in 1963 by NASA and the Air Force was the first of two missions expected to pass the 100-kilometer height of the Kármán line, set by the International Aeronautical Federation. Flown by pilot Joseph Walker, this flight suffered from a few interesting deviations from the original plan. But instead of ruining it, these unexpected divergences in the plan helped Walker ascend over the Kármán line and become the first U.S. civilian in space. It also turned the X-15 mission into the first space flight of a space plane in aviation history. A hypersonic rocket plane. In the 1950s, NASA's predecessor, the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics, joined the Air Force and the Navy to create the X-Series program of experimental rocket-powered planes. The project, which began in 1954, had the main objective to push all aviation boundaries. Its most ambitious prototype was the X-15, a hypersonic rocket-powered aircraft expected to fly as fast as Mach 6 speed and at peak altitudes of at least 46 miles. In the book X-15, Extending the Frontiers of Flight by Dennis Jenkins, the plane is described as a, quote, airplane of accelerations. When an X-15 pilot looks back on his X-15 flights, it is the accelerations he remembers. The plane had a length of 50 feet and a mass of about 33,300 pounds at launch. It also had a pair of low aspect ratio trapezoidal shaped wings that spanned over 20 feet. Based on NACA research, the X-15 was implanted with a set of wedge-shaped vertical stabilizers and thinner, down-pointing horizontal stabilizers to provide directional control during flight. These stabilizers gave the aircraft its signature arrow-like look. The X-15 was powered by an XLR-99 engine that burned through 19,000 pounds of liquid anhydrous ammonia and liquid oxygen held in its propellant tanks. If the plane was flying too high, and the air was too rarefied for its aerodynamic controls to work correctly, the X-15 relied on a set of small hydrogen peroxide-fueled jets installed on the nose. Wingtips with thrusts of 180 and 450 newtons also aided in attitude control. The first X-15 made its first unpowered glide flight after being dropped from its carrier on June 8, 1959. This achievement was followed by the first powered flight of a second prototype on September 17th. On November 15, 1960, the aircraft took its first ever powered flight with an XLR-99 engine. The third aircraft, X-15-3, made its inaugural flight on December 20, 1961, with NASA civilian pilot and future legend Neil Armstrong at the controls. Records on Records In its lengthy operational period, which ran from 1959 through 1968, the X-15 completed over 100 flights, its performance expectations kept expanding to ever higher speeds and altitudes. The flight missions usually began early in the morning, as most flight testing at Edwards Air Force Base did, when the temperature and wind in the high desert are lower. On Flight 52 of the program, which occurred on April 30, 1962, a NASA test pilot flew the X-15 to an altitude of 237,600 feet, achieving its original design goal height. Flight number 63 in July of that same year broke yet another record of altitude. This time, USAF's Robert White piloted the X-15 to a height of 311,520 feet, which prompted the Air Force to grant White his certification for astronaut wings. All these successful missions led the engineers of the X-15 to seek more records to break. The aircraft was still capable of more astounding achievements. Walker The directors of the X-15 program had high expectations for flights number 90 and 91. To test the X-15's limits while still leaving a safe margin to avoid possible hardware performance, they decided to fly the plane in two successive missions at an altitude of 360,000 feet. This way, the plane would fly above the Kármán line, an imaginary barrier set up by the International Aeronautical Federation to establish a boundary between Earth's atmosphere and outer space. The Federation defines the Kármán line as the altitude of 100 kilometers or 330,000 feet above the Earth's mean sea level. 
Pilot Joseph A. Walker was chosen to achieve missions number 90 in 91. He first joined the Army Air Forces during World War II, where he served as a weather reconnaissance pilot. He later joined NACA after the war as an experimental physicist and eventually became a civilian test pilot. In 1951, Walker was moved to the Edwards Flight Research Facilities, where he was promoted to chief research pilot. As such, he flew an extensive array of aircraft such as the Bell X-1, two versions of the Douglas D-558 Skyrocket, the Douglas X-3 Stiletto, the Northrop X-4 Bantam, and the Bell X-5. In 1958, Walker joined the X-15 program when NACA was absorbed into NASA that same year. Walker's first milestone came when he flew the X-15 for the first time on March 25, 1960. This became NASA's first ever mission. By the summer of 1963, the pilot had already flown the aircraft 23 times. Above the Carmen Line, Flight 90 For Flight Number 90, Walker was set to equalize pilot Robert White's records. The X-15 engine would burn for 83 seconds to achieve its peak speed of Mach 5.4 and a total altitude of 314,961 miles. During the mission, Walker would deploy a special balloon on the end of a line to measure air density while other experiments were being performed simultaneously. These experiments included using an ultraviolet photometer to measure Earth's backgrounds and an infrared photometer to measure the aircraft's exhaust signature. On July 19, 1963, Flight Number 90 began just like every other X-15 mission, with a takeoff from Edwards Air Force Base. The plane was attached under a modified B-52 bomber's wing at 10.19 local time and surrounded by several chase aircraft. Following the release from the carrier aircraft over Smith Ranch Lake, Walker fired the plane's rocket engine and the X-15 started to climb. In contrast to the plan, the plane's engine fired for 84.5 seconds instead of 83. This unpredictable device began to swing towards slightly higher performance. Flight number 90's ascent trajectory also turned out to be 0.5 degrees steeper than planned. As a result of these small but essential deviations, the X-15 exceeded all expectations and hit a speed of Mach 5.5, or 3,710 miles per hour. Even more importantly, the aircraft also overshot its planned ceiling for the mission by 31,200 feet. Because of this, its trajectory peaked at 347,800 feet. Technically speaking, Walker had unwittingly entered space and became a space pilot aboard his X-15, becoming the first civilian in space. After 11 minutes and 25 seconds in free flight, Walker piloted his X-15 through re-entry and safely landed on Rogers Dry Lake at Edwards Air Force Base. Ninety-one. Following the success of mission number 90, the program's engineers prepped for the second flight that would continue to test the limits of the X-15, this time with a flight altitude of 360,900 miles. For mission 91, the engine would burn for 84.5 seconds and reach a top speed of Mach 5.38. But over the course of two weeks, three launch attempts had to be aborted. On August 3rd, the flight was called off due to weather. A week later, problems with the X-15's auxiliary power unit halted the mission. On August 15th, there were problems with both the weather and the auxiliary power unit, as well as an additional issue with a malfunctioning radio. Flight number 91 finally took off on August 22, 1963. After a two-minute climb, the X-15, again with Walker at the controls, hit yet another record. This time, the X-15 reached an altitude of 354,199 feet, only a couple thousand feet shy from their goal, but sufficient enough for the mission. Walker piloted the X-15 through re-entry and landed safely on Rogers Dry Lake. After Flight 91, pilot Joe Walker became the first person to fly into space twice. It would be more than 40 years before another rocket-powered aircraft would beat the record. Post-flight After his record-shattering mission, pilot Joe Walker left the X-Series program for other projects. Sadly, Walker's life ended in a tragic accident on June 8, 1966, when his F-194 aircraft crashed into an XB-70 Valkyrie bomber during a formation stunt and flight show during a publicity photo shoot. As for the X-15, the program continued for more than five years after Flight 90 and flew an additional 108 missions. Additionally, eight of said flights helped qualify five more pilots for their astronaut wings. One of these risky missions claimed the life of a pilot aboard the third X-15. 
On November 15, 1967, USAF test pilot Michael Adams perished when his aircraft tore apart during a botched re-entry while descending from a peak altitude of 50 miles. Michael Adams was awarded his astronaut wings posthumously. The X-15's 200th flight never came to be after being delayed several times due to a plethora of technical problems and bad weather. It wasn't destined to fly into space again. The program was cancelled officially on December 20th, 1968.